Uh, but either way, here we go. The opening kickoff of the Rams Club Championship. And Bush will receive. He'll be in the all-white uniforms. This is just what I was telling you before we got on air. This is, these are the best combinations of the uniforms. The all-white with the white, white ram on the helmet and then the classic yellow and blue on the other side for Dini. But Bush is going to get it first. Oh, most definitely. And what you're going to see out of Bush here is a, a New England offense. Um, he's got no chemistries, he's got no playmakers, he's got no deep route specialists, uh, nothing like that. Said he hadn't used them, so he didn't want to put them on his lineup. Said he felt like even more uncomfortable using a mechanism he had never used before. All right, Tom McNabb in the gun. He'll start at the 16, not a great field position. And he'll hand it off and a little spin move. Uh, and he goes nowhere with Barry. You mentioned that uh, McNabb that he's got. It's actually the 95 overall gauntlet McNabb, uh, which there is a higher version of him if you go at the power-up. Uh, he said he used the power-up version, didn't notice a big enough difference between that cap to have to use it. Yeah, I mean, it, you, that's the thing about being the GM here in salary cap. You don't want to waste that cap space. If you don't need to, you can use it somewhere else. They're going to give him a yard on first down, so that brings up second and nine. McNabb, a little play action. Has time, has a man, throws, and Bush hauls it in at the 44. That was Tyreek Hill. Yeah, just got right in between the zones there. Perfect read. He waited just long enough to where he uh, couldn't click on to one of those defenders and close the gap. That's a good read by Bush there. Paul Krause late getting over in that cover three. So first and ten now. It's the danger, the one high safety. So this when he got those vertical routes. And this time checking it down. I, I like what I'm seeing so far. He, he proves that, okay, I, I'm going to run the ball a little bit. I'm going to check it down if I need to. But if you sleep on me, I'm not afraid to throw it deep. Absolutely. You, you've got to go up top early in the game, in my opinion. You've got to set the precedent. You've got to let the other guy know that, hey, if I need to, I can do this. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wide well, receiver screen. Are we, are we throwing bubble screens out here? I like it. <laughs> I don't love it, but I like it. Did you want some more of it? <laughs> I'm not sure about that. Buffalo defensive book at Anini here. Said you're going to see quite a bit of double eight gap pressure. He said he's not going to send it every time, but you're going to have to think about it every time. I'm not sure he's not in some college playbook from 2009. Uh, and that's going to bring up fourth down. He's at the 40-yard line. Hurry up. Don't love that either. Fourth and six. With the uh, 10 cap Bailey with 79 kick power for Bush. Definitely not going to make it from 57 here. Kind of in no man's land. Don't want to bring out your punter. Let's see, can he convert here? See what he has on the hurry up here. McNabb sets his feet. Looking, Rocky firing, throws an interception. Here comes Eric Berry back the other way for Nini, and he'll have great field position at the 36. And I think that may have been a predetermined read there. The corner route just doesn't get behind the cloud flat. Cloud flat jumps it. Great click on, great pick. You got to wait for that route to develop just a little bit more. I think he got a little antsy in the pocket there. Yeah, might have been able to check it down there and maybe pick up the first down on the rack. Nevertheless, it was forked down anyway, so no harm done. It's just a short punt, right? Yeah, it goes down as a four-yard punt. And here comes Nini. Tennessee offensive book out of Nini here. A lot of under center U-trips no, you're going to see from him. I love this pick at running back here. Old Jordan Howard. You know, somebody gets in front of you, that truck stick activated. Could be a difference in the game right here. Now, going back to that interception there, Nini is using the full lockdown. He has plus three man and plus three zone to every one of those D-backs out there. I'm sure that played a little bit. Also, that plus two catch uh, probably helped out on that interception. Uh, he's also going with full sprinter, which you can see on display here with that speed. Just makes the jump. So we're probably saying the majority of the cap being spent on the defensive side of the ball for Nini. Absolutely. Uh, especially with Jordan Howard and Russell Wilson sort of leading the helm here. And, and I guess if you got great play calling and great reads, who needs it? As Hill works his way to the 23. Yeah, majority of the cap went to uh, the defensive side of the ball and the best offensive line I have seen in the Madden 19 club championships. He has got a powered up O-lineman to at least 85 overall on every single position at the O-line. Hey, it works for the Patriots, but they got Tommy Ballgame as their quarterback. But hey, if you, if you got great play calling, you can get, you know, you got receivers that can get spacing. Uh, if you got a clean pocket, 
Uh, there's a lot of quarterbacks in Madden that can make the throw. Definitely. He said he's going to be under center more often than not, so he wanted that O-line. He didn't want to get any of the insta-sheds. Didn't want to see a lot of that A-gap pressure come in and affect him, so he spent a lot of cap on the O-line. He goes with the gun here on second and ten. Just outside the red zone. His opening drive after the interception. Goes with the play action again. Trying to wait for X to get open, and that's a dippity dot down to the three-yard line. Just squeezed it into three different defenders there. Great read. Julio just found the soft spot. You see that crosser get behind the yellows, stay in front of the deep blues. If you don't have that route on your field, you definitely should now. Now the tough sledding begins. First and goal from the three. I formation. Double tight end to the left. Jones is solo to the right. And he'll run it to the weak side. Gets a block, and Howard is in for the score. You see he fell forward there. Uh, Bush spent most of his cap, and what was he was uh, looking forward to the most was speed in his secondary. Wasn't as concerned with the hit power, with the tackling. Uh, maybe had something to do with this fall forward that you'll see here. Stretches it out wide, gets caught, but Ware and the D-back together were not a match. Uh, the 128 players that qualified for the club championship, Bush has the number one rushing defense, and it got shredded on the opening drive. Yeah, you, you start to wonder if maybe that uh, number one rushing defense is helped out uh, by that weekend league lineup. Uh, he said he is missing a little bit of his hit power, and it does. Uh, he wished he could have more of it. Uh, he just couldn't fit it into that cap. Double A gap look again here for me, and he stays in it. So they hand it off right up the middle. Up the gut to the 41, quick 17-yard game. Yeah, and Barry just had a gap there. Uh, I think Nene may have thought he was clicking onto a linebacker there, ended up taking a little bit of a bad angle. Uh, gave him extra three yards. He didn't have to. So first and ten up under center. Bush trying to answer. The score by Nene. Threw an INT on his first possession. Got as far as the 40-yard line. And he's going to be wrapped up and sacked back at the 34. Yeah, McNabb not quite as mobile as a Vic, not quite as mobile as uh, maybe even a Steve Young uh, that a lot of people will use um, to uh, power him up. Uh, but that gauntlet McNabb just wasn't able to get away there. Coming up on 30 seconds left in the quarter, just a one-score game. Rolling out with McNabb, looking, finding. And... I'll get him all the way down to the 27-yard line. Good job of rolling out here. Not necessarily under tons of pressure, uh, but it has a good job of affecting those zones. You see how they have to creep up a little bit as that, as that quarterback rolls out, uh, vacate a little bit of that zone, gives that uh, tight end just enough room to get open there. Final seconds of the quarter, a little delay. Barry. Okay, Bush really mixing up the play calling. Most definitely. Wanting to keep him off balance. Uh, you've got to get your points back here. Uh, good lead block there. Spins into it. Doesn't make anybody miss. Uh, but picks up the first down. Great way to end the quarter. So at the end of one, it's Nene 7, Bush 0. But he's on a drive now in the red zone at the 17. Ohio! Ohio! Only his first red zone trip ever here in salary cap mode. Let's see what his offense looks like. Uh, in the hardest part of the field to move the ball. What's your thoughts on this double A gap? It makes you think all the time on offense. You have to know uh, who you should ID uh, as far as your Mike linebackers go. Uh, you've got to make sure that you don't shift your line the wrong direction and leave a free defender off the Ooh, edge. Ooh, Barry Sanders to and the if, three. If you do leave a free defender off the edge, you just hit him with one of them juke moves right there, and it doesn't matter at all, I guess. Just watch this. Straight off the edge, Ooh. nobody touches him. Little spin, little juke for him. I like it. Let's see, that was vintage Barry Sanders. You say, oh, well, that's a Madden move. No, no, Barry, Barry could do that <laughs> time and time again. And now it's first and goal at the three. Yeah, Barry behind probably the second best O-line of all time, behind maybe some of those mid-'90s Dallas Cowboys O-lines. And he'll get close to the goal line here. They're going to mark him at the one-yard line, second and goal. Going to be interesting to see if he comes out um, with different goal line audibles or just comes and runs the play as is. Watch out for the fullback here on second and goal. That's where he goes, and it's a touchdown. 
And we might have a tall tie ball game pinning this extra point. Way to bounce back from the INT on the first possession to put together an eight play 75 yard drive. With that fullback dive there, he now officially has a 100% touchdown efficiency rating in the, in the red zone in salary cap. Let's see, can he keep that? Takes it from seven yards deep with Dion. Had a little bit of a hole there, just couldn't get through it. Maybe had an alley if he made that one man miss. Would have been off to the races. Very few are going to catch Dion if he gets through there. But primetime looks tough in any uniform. Rams, Braves, throw them in anything, <laughs> right? Russell Wilson with time. And threw it into coverage. Luckily, that's just an incomplete pass. If he would have looked just a single level higher, I think he had the crosser to his B button. That'll bring up a second and 10 in a tie ball game. 3.52 to go in the half. Skyco along with Grocery. Our honor to bring you here, the LA Rams Club Championship. Who's going to represent them? In San Francisco, that's a big question. And there's a big sack by LT. If you've got Lawrence Taylor coming off the edge, you can't stand in the pocket that long. You've got to get rid of the ball, even if it's just getting rid of it. Second and 10, a lot easier to pick up than third and 21. Your playbook shrinks quite a bit here. The best outside linebacker of all time, Lawrence Taylor, getting in there with a the sack. That's going to force a third and 21 after the loss of 11. Quick throw on the wheel, and that was another dangerous pass, but that'll get some of it back. And here comes a hurry up on fourth and nine. Basically picks up what he lost on the sack there. Hurries up back into the uh, tight, which is what he says he prefers to pass out of. Goes the air here. Offensive line giving him time. He's got just a single spy. The spy does come in now. And here's the B button. Tyreek. Does a good job of kind of standing in the way there, forcing that spy to come up. You don't want that spy to be able to play as a zone over the middle of the field there. So as soon as that spy comes in, you'll see him playmaker that wide receiver upfield, fire it up there. That's great pocket presence. Nice job clicking on with a possession catch down at the 33. Huge fourth down conversion there for Nene. New set of downs now. Under three to play in the half. And Wilson looking. Trying to make an angle here, and Smartly would just throw it away. A lot of those escape routes kind of bunched together in the field. Uh, didn't have anything to get to dump it off to. I love the throw away. I think he was thinking touchdown there after the big play, trying to hit him one more time. Let's see if he goes to the running game here with Howard. Boy, had the hole to the gut. right. Up the gut was, man. Maybe would have been a touchdown, but he'll pick up three. Would have been very hard to stop him if he would have got to that gap on the right side there, just to the right of the center. So here's another third down. Ball at the 30-yard line. Would be a 47-yarder from here. Good, good, good. Now, Nini did go with an 18-cap kicker for himself. Uh, 10 uh, power better than the most common Bailey that you see there. Uh, 88 power uh, compared to the 79 uh, or even 78 power you'll see some of these kickers having. It doesn't matter because Julio Jones is stretching for the goal line, and they'll mark his knee down at the one. Nini, of course, will smartly take it to the two-minute warning. You don't want to give a free timeout to Charles on his way back down. Just a little comeback route. Yeah, kind of posts himself up there, strafes up so nobody can get in front of him, grabs it, falls forward, just down to behind the one-yard line. Well, we've seen a lot of offense here at the Coliseum early. Cannot wait for that new stadium in L.A. Might be the best in the world by the time it's all said and done. They hand it off to Howard, and he'll get in there. That's two rushing touchdowns now against the number one rated rushing defense. Hangs his head there for a moment. Eight play, 69-yard drive, taking up two minutes, and nice stretch play. Definitely. Just does a good job of not cutting up field too early. Uh, just stay behind your blockers. Do what you have to do to get into the end zone. Doesn't matter if you cross it over the pylon or you cross it right over the heart of the field. We'll take it at zone five. Here comes Dion. They try to make a man miss. Uh, but he'll just get to the 25-yard line. No harm done here for Bush. He's a possession behind. So this 154 is very important as Nini's going to get the ball to start half number two. All three of his timeouts here. Uh, time not necessarily a factor. 
see if he can put a drive together, tie this game up before we get to half. Two deep safeties move up. We got split backs here on first to 10. Hello. And that's that double A gap right there. That just tends to confuse that offensive line. If he sends more than you can block, if he's sending six and you've only got five in, the offensive line and really the awareness of the center is what matters most there. A lot of people don't understand that the awareness on the center matters double compared to a lot of the other players. So when that double A gap comes in, really affected the center. Your awareness has to be very high to be able to pick up that blitz. Deacon Jones would have approved on that last hit. And here is semifinal number one. We got Little Man and Bobcats coming up next. And here's a heave. Oh, I think Peterson could have had that. He clicked on. He clicked onto the receiver. He thought he was going to click onto the left D-back. Instead, he got clicked onto the right D-back, pulled him completely out of the way, and ends up giving up a bomb. That's a heartbreaker for Nini here. Watch him click onto the safety, expecting to get the one to the left side of the field. They click him onto Peterson instead, and you see just that little bit of movement that ends up giving him the space. Yeah, you, you hate that matchup of Kraus on Hill. And big play there for Bush. Now he's at second and nine from the 22. Even three here could be big. I love the timeout there. You want to make sure your entire team has their full stamina when they come out. You also want to rest yourself. Just give yourself that quick second. Make sure you're getting the correct play call. I really like that timeout. And a shotgun now. Clock on the move with... 47 seconds and he can't take a sack and there is Jason Taylor getting in there. Just too much block shed. I think he had the flats there to the running back. Just doesn't see it in time. When he does see it, he's getting screamed at right in his face. McNabb without a gunslinger is not going to have time to get rid of that. So that's going to bring up a third and 16. You, gotta, you can't take back-to-back -back sacks here. That might push you out of field goal range. Every yard is important with 10 cap Bailey. A run in with Barry Sanders. Beautiful. Spin move. He'll get the first down and more. And out of bounds at the 11-yard line. And a little smile there from Nene as Bush carves him up. You almost wonder if he kind of hopes he stayed inbounds there. You don't want to give Nene too much time if you get into the end zone. Of a beautiful spin move to pick up that first down. Goes back to Barry. Can he get to the edge again? And he will get in there. And if the first spin move works, I bet the second's even better. Gets him to cross that pylon, and we are going to have a tie game pinning this extra point. Bush had a top 50 rushing offense there in the qualifiers, and he's really put it on display here. A missed tackle there, a spin that doesn't give an animation to the defender. Great stick work by Bush. Two timeouts in 32 seconds. Here comes Deion Sanders. At some point, he might take one to the crib. I mean, these deep kicks, uh, it's a high-risk, high-reward situation here. we got a tie ball game, 28 seconds to go, two timeouts. And if it's not the kick you're worried about him taking back, it's this play right here. you got to worry about Julio on the left side, which means, oh, Julio and Reek. So we don't have Deion out there at all here. Yeah, Cooper in the slot. Howard is your solo back. Up under center goes Wilson. Reek made his man miss. There it is. That's a beautiful comeback route. Uh, Darius misses a press there, which gives the advantage immediately, as you'll see there. Misses the press. The comeback route gets wide open. Too much separation. Gives him tons of room to get out of bounds. That is a great route when you need to get out of bounds. Especially against the cover three. Everybody's dropping back. No one underneath. Speaking of no one underneath, but somehow threads it into Amari Cooper down at the 38-yard line. And gets out of bounds again. Keep those two timeouts in your back pocket, young man. Needs about nine yards for safety. Try to put up three. Goes to Jordan Howard. And with those two timeouts, what a play call. And he'll use one of them right there with 10 seconds to go. 10 seconds and a timeout gives him time to go ahead and get that post route over the middle or really anything over the middle to where he gets tackled. He can quickly call that timeout and either attempt a seven or maybe take the three. Yeah, excellent point here. I, I got to take a shot at the end zone here. Anything underneath, 19. there's no need for it. And if it's not there, you just throw it away. Got to make a decision here. And it's smartly would just throw it away and he's going to take his three. Great job throwing it away there, giving himself enough time to get this kickoff. Great presence. You can tell he has been in this situation before. Well, an incredible last 52 seconds of the half. Saw a lot of scoring in that second quarter, and it's just a three-point lead for Nene. 
And of course, those three points are just that much more important when you're getting the ball back. Gives you a chance to open up a two possession lead, which in the second half, and with a ball control type of offense that Nini runs, can be very dangerous. Dion, I told you this is dangerous and gets forced out of bounds. I think that was maybe Terrell Owens. Trying to take a look at the back of that jersey. T.O. is my favorite uh, NBA All-Star Game celebrity participant. I'll tell you that much. His dunks in that game he's are pretty, always He's pretty tough. Pretty tough at everything, to be honest with you. Especially, no, especially crunches in the driveway. It's my quarterback, man. <laughs> the deepest, the de deepest defender that you see there is about 10 yards off the line, and it was the two corners. Uh, Charles was basically selling out for the run you'll see here. Uh, I'm surprised that you don't see any kind of play action, uh, maybe even a max protect with a deep route there. He had a chance to go up top. Is that out of position Megatron? Is that, is that what that is? At free safety. Yeah. Yeah. So not Terrell Owens. It's an out of position Megatron. And he's going to bomb it deep to Julio. One hand grab down at the 13. He's in business. You're going to need more than two to cover him on that high ball right there. you got to wonder if the uh, speed at corner instead of the hit power uh, calls more of that than anything. Uh, with your max, I think if you said his highest hit power in the secondary is around 79, uh, which isn't going to get it done on those high ball animations. You really need somebody that's going to deliver a hit stick and jar that ball loose. Wilson once again here on first down. <laughs> Scramble out to the left and just try to get a few yards. They'll mark him out the 11-yard line. This Russell Wilson, when I first saw him on his opening drive, I said, uh-oh, I don't know what we're going to get here from, from number three. But he has proved that he can, he can do it all at a nice cap level. He's definitely uh, been mobile enough, has the arm. It's not the full power-up. I believe there was a level left uh, on his power-up. Uh, but he liked what he saw on his uh, thresholds, on his throw power, on his throw accuracy, and he seemed to get the job done so far. He's going to bring up a big third and four. This would be huge for Charles Bush if he could get a stop here in the red zone. Wilson, seven step drop, looking. Only rushes two. He's going to have to send that spot. Playmaker, and that'll be dropped. Would have been enough for the first down. And now he's going to have to settle for three. Huge stop for Charles there. Keeps it a one possession game. Gives him the chance to go down and take the lead on the ensuing drive. And it's up and it is good. So that'll put him up by six. But if you're Charles Bush right now, you're saying, okay, I threw that interception on my opening drive, but I've come back and I've held him to three a few times. And now I got the opportunity to maybe take the lead. Definitely got to feel like you're in the driver's seat in this situation here. Dion. He's got an alley. Can't get a pass, Peterson. And he'll take over at the 26-yard line. That's where he'll go to work with Donovan McNabb. And it was the running game last time out for Bush. That was really the difference. Looks like he's flipped the double A gap here. Maybe you'll see a little bit more pressure from the right side instead of the left. And keep an eye on that. It just even, even looking at his roster, just feels like a weekend league kind of roster. Yeah, yeah, he said he didn't even use the players, uh, most of the players on his team. Hit from behind there by Eric Berry, who was coming off the edge. That's going to bring up a third and 11. Here you can see it again. Eric Berry getting in there. And they'll hand it off to Barry Sanders. Ain't got no time for replays, but there's a first down at the 37. You got no time for replays. Barry's got no time for third and 11. Just give me the ball. I'll pick it up, coach. And so now it'll be first and 10. New set of downs. Move the chains. Halfway through the third quarter. Five-minute quarter, salary cap mode. Scott Cole are, uh, with Big Grocery here at the LA Rams club championship trying to figure out who's going to represent these Rams in San Francisco next week. And as you saw there, that double A gap starting to bring a little more heat. He's starting to blitz a little more often out of that. Uh, you can tell he didn't like how many uh, yards he gave up on those first few drives. He didn't expect to give up 14 points already, and he has turned up the aggression on this defense. And very efficient. The only incomplete pass he's thrown 
was the INTs. Nine of ten right now with McNabb. So you're saying not a single ball has touched the ground. That's right. It goes back to Barry. And I, right now, I just, I'm loving it. It feels a little Madden 18 to me, but I'm loving it. Oh, that's two drives in a row you'll see here. He picks up third down with a run with Barry just right up the gut. He is not scared of the run defense out of this double-A gap at all. First and 10. And, and I think you bring up a, a good point. At some point, I think you got to switch it up on those third mids. you got to maybe get out of the double-A gap, come with a 4-3 or I'm not sure what playbook he's in on defense whether it's a three or four man front, but you need some sort of run defense there on third down. Yeah, Nene in this Buffalo book, uh, I'd like to see him just put put a, big, a little bit more meat on the line, put, put, put some more big guys in here. He's just getting da just getting gashed Ooh. up the middle there. Big hit, though. Is that Aaron Donald? Third and three. Are we going to see three consecutive third down runs? That's what I'm saying. You, you come out with something different right here. That was one of those old Andre the Giant animations when he tried to slap him in his shoulder bump. He had it away. Big hit there. Split back, so he'll go to the air. And breaks away from one, but can't get away from another. And we're going to have a fourth and short, and here comes the hurry up. Vintage weekend league. <laughs> Definitely not going to hit this field goal with the Bailey that he has. Got to go for this. It's twice in a row he's got caught in no man's land here. Can't bring the punter out with only five minutes and some change left in this game. Got to pick this up. McNabb, here comes the pressure. They pick it up, and he makes a throw, and it's going to be picked off. It's a user lurk. Gets baited by one of the greatest of all time, Sean Taylor. I think he may have had the alley to pick that up with the quarterback. He's got some mobility here. He rolled away from the pressure. The only other player had gotten pancaked. I think he could have made it. Just a little bit of a uh, first live event decision making there. That was a heck of a user play, though, because at, at quick glance, it looked open. And speaking of open, here comes Howard, 30, 20. He's on his horse. Touchdown, Nene. And just like that, it's a two-possession game. Wouldn't be surprised to see him go for two here to make it a full 14 points. No need. Oh, he will. All right. A little pistol look here. I like it. You need a two-point conversion play. He's got one in the back of his pocket here. And I, I just think it's wasted points. I mean, it, <laughs> we don't see a lot of people pick up the two-point conversion, but Jordan Howard, look at him just outrunning Amos. Not going to catch that man in the open field there. Great stick work on the spin move. But those points could come to haunt him. It's now only 12 points, which means two touchdowns and a single extra point. You know on ESPN, they got the little win probability. Indeed. After the interception of that long run, that thing just went way up. It's like in the 90 percentile right now. How much did it dip on the failed two-point conversion? Yeah, a little bit. Not too bad, though. I'm just, I'm just not a fan of going for two until you need to go for two. McNabb will hand it off to Barry Sanders, who's closing in on the century mark. Charles may be a little worried here. Wants to try to get a second playoff for the third quarter. Feeling a little back to the ropes right now. Will he get it off? He will not. I think he just hurried up to take a look-see at the line and said, this is a big down here. Maybe a little lab session. Maybe I should think better of this. Well, that double A gap nickel at times has given up some rushing yards, especially up the gut. Because every time you're going to see those linebackers spread, you know, they're going to drop back to where they sort of would be in like a 4-2-5. But his user out of that double A gap is phenomenal, but somehow gets the pass in there at the 43. Boy, did Bush need that one. Great click on for Randy there. If you score early here, there's still tons of time left in this game. Trips to the left. Ingram is your tight end on the right side. Barry Sanders to the right of Don McNabb. They'll flip him to the other side. It's really hard to know where the pressure's going to come from. Good hit by Eric there. Makes him drop it. Uh, you're probably okay with the drop there if you're Charles. I'd rather have the clock stop than pick up, you know, the yard that you had a chance of picking up there. Semifinal number one. We got Little Man and Bobcats coming up in our next game. Trying to see who's going to make the final. Who's going to represent the Rams? And there's a key first down down at the 32. 
Now, I don't want to see him get too far away from the run here. There's still quite a bit of time. The run's been his bread and butter so far. Don't necessarily have to air this ball out the rest of this game. And beautiful play design. I, I think, you know, obviously the user of Nini has been really good, but I would attack it, whether it's with the running game or the passing game, especially with Barry Sanders. Definitely you have the ability to make that first defender miss, then no one can catch you after that. Because although Sean Taylor at linebacker is a phenomenal item in the game, nowhere close to the speed of Barry Sanders. Most definitely not. So in the red zone, first and 10 at the 17. Promising drive here for Bush, who's trying to make it a one-score game. Going up against the one high safety. Oh, and Eric picked. had a chance at a pick six, and the ball just gets over his head. A gain of six instead. Let's see, does that hurt him in the long run? If he scores here, he may think about that for the least last three and a half minutes. Yeah, that would clinch it. And that's going to be a pick. He's throwing Stevies out here, and Shazier, he might take it to the crib. Like a good team captain, Ryan Shazier has his back and gets the pick the next play. Great jump there, great click on, and that may do it for Charles Bush. I'm with you. I, I kind of felt like he went away from the running game on that drive. Still had plenty of time. So successful with Barry Sanders, and it's just tough to throw down there. And now he's between a rock and a hard place here. So many extra defenders oh in the passing game there. When you got the sidelines, you got the back of the end zone. Just, just so cramped up there. Jordan Howard, check out the stat line. Nine carries for 145 yards. Not a bad day's work. He's averaging about 16 yards a carry. Which, when you think about it, absolutely crazy. Only gave up 11 rushing yards per game in his latter games. A lot of players don't run up under center, though. I think that's enough to give any anybody. And I'm speaking of the weekend league. I know we've got a lot of competitive guys that do like to go up under center. But in the weekend league, it's it's a run and gun and fun kind of kind of thing. And it's a different animal. There are people that take it very competitively, like our man Charles Bush here. And there's people that jump on there to have a good time. Second and seven. There's a few bazookas out there. There's no doubt about it. The goon lineups. And Howard will get absolutely smashed by Megatron. Great stick work there. Makes the defender miss on his own. Loops in. Doesn't need any crossfire blitzes. He can do the loop himself. Great hit there. So that'll bring up a third and nine with 2.32 to go here in semifinal number one. Little Man and Bobcats is up next. Right now it's looking like Nene's going to find himself in the final. A place where he lost last year in the Rams Club Championship. They're in Madden 18. Lucky just to get that one away. Of course, a sack there would have taken it to the two-minute warning. So, Both these players representing Los Angeles, California, not only the Rams, but as hometowns. So you're guaranteed to see a hometown kid in the finals here. Looking like it'll be Nene. He's going to go for it. Watch out for the tight end hook here. See if he audibles out of this for something to the corner. Fourth and nine. Throws a first down, might do it here. And squeezes it in. It's going to pin on the mark, and it'll be a first down. That'll take you to the two-minute warning. Only one timeout for Charles. Probably means he's not going to be able to get this ball back. Great first showing for that gentleman. But I know Nini is excited to try to get over that hump. Losing last year in the Rams uh, finals to primetime. He's going to have a chance to avenge that loss against either Little Man or Bobcats. This is his third year in the club championship. He was, I remember him losing by three. I was there in San Francisco when he came up short to Monsta. Up there in San Fran, decided to move himself a little down south there to SoCal, and he's looked good in this first game. And done it in a lot of different ways with the running game, the passing game, and his user ability on defense really sh was sh put on display here in this one. Most definitely was. Uh, you, you definitely really saw the difference in that lockdown. You saw two interceptions out of him. Uh, that Shazier with the extra man coverage and the extra zone coverage helped out as well. Uh, but that full lockdown chemistry uh, just, just made it to where the only offense for Charles is to run the ball. And when he got away from that, basically sealed the game for Nini. 
This is going to be a 56 yarder. Maybe he wants to confirm the range for the final. I can't see the wind. Uh, it looks like seven miles at his back. All so right. he's got a little extra power coming his way. And maybe that's why he decided just to launch it out there and just squeaks in. The, just over remember. the crossbar. You don't have to remember anything. So it's OK. It, it never happened. I could have used that bounce in the playoffs. 29 to 14. It's 15 point ball game here. Bush is pretty much going to have to run this back and get an onside kick. And Dion breaks a tackle, pushed out of bounds at the 34. Was very close to being halfway all to there. Had one man to beat, had a chance to return that kick. Let's see, does he have any bombs? So first and 10 at the 34. He'll, he'll play action, goes back to Barry. I'm not sure a handoff there wouldn't have been a terrible thing. There was a lot of running room. It's been his best offense so far. Anything in bounds is detrimental. He's got to get rid of it, throws it up top. Krause is there, and he will pick it off. The best helmet in football comes away with a game winner there. And again, that lockdown chemistry on display. Paul Krause is going to get the chance to strafe up here, get a big body, and get a pick to seal this game up. The best formation in football for Nini here. Yeah, he will bend the knee, but he will move on to the final here. With a 29-14 victory. Now, I'll be honest, I probably would have took the bait and said he took a knee knee. <laughs> but that's just because I'm simple. I didn't want anybody to think I have a stuttering problem. So I just, I just, I kept it, I kept it with just a single knee. But double knee, knee squared, ends up taking the victory here. He'll play for his second consecutive uh, Los Angeles Rams Madden Club title game. So he'll make the final. The question is, who will he play? Will it be Little Man or Bobcats? We got that one coming up in a moment. But a strong victory right here. Bernini and 